Hello, friends and neighbors. Let's talk about a lady who was willing to do whatever it took to get to Jesus. Welcome to A Word for Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. Each Wednesday, you will find Boggs Family Ministries is here with our host, Davy Boggs. Having you along with us is a wonderful addition. Now, let's enjoy together A Word for Wednesday. Thank you, Brother Devin. And thank you for joining us on A Word for Wednesday. So great to have you. Well, today's kind of a bittersweet moment, not for you, but for me. And I'm going to share it with you because that's what I do. This blue vest that I'm wearing, it's done. The zipper is busted. So I'm going to have to move on. I've got another one It looks a lot like it, a lot the same material on the front, but it's very heavy. This vest has been my go-to vest, and I've got several different colors, different styles, but this has been my go-to vest. We've been trying to think the last few days, five or six years. I'm in my third year of doing a word for Wednesday, and I have recorded very few without this vest. Only a couple of you have noticed that enough to say something about it. I've recorded a couple with a suit coat. I may have recorded a couple with just a dress shirt and a tie. Most of the well over 115, 20 episodes have been with me wearing this vest all over the country. But it's done. It's time for me to move on. We've looked for one just like it. Can't find it. It's so lightweight. It's comfortable, yet it keeps me warm. But things change, don't they? So next week, maybe you'll see me in a different vest. We'll see. I've been talking the last couple of weeks about God's impeccable timing. This story that I'm going to tell you today is not necessarily so much to do with timing. It is, but not so much to do with timing as it is with grace. It's just a great salvation story that I love to tell. I've been telling these salvation stories. And it's got me thinking about people getting saved. I love, love this story. The lady's name is Dorcas. The place is back in Nigeria in a Bayakuta at Brother Shabanke's main church. The year is 2009. We are there for our second trip to Nigeria. We were first there in 2007, back in 2009. Odie was with us on that trip. We had a minister's conference in the church during the daytime. We had a gospel crusade out on the outside grounds at night. And that trip, we moved North, after that, to the city of Abaddon and did it all over again. We we rented a church there, a large church, and advertised a minister's conference, had a great crowd. We did a, another minister's conference on completely different topics and had a crusade at night at Brother Kouye's church in Abaddon. Brother Kouye's church sits right in a Muslim neighborhood. It was an exciting crusade. But this happened in the first week in Abayakuta. I am preaching that night. I'm up on the platform. I'm preaching, giving my heart, preaching to the lost, giving the salvation message, preaching the gospel the best I know how, making an invitation. The people in Nigeria, they sit them at the crusade back quite a ways from the the platform. They want to, I, I don't know the whole reason, but they want to have a lot of room for people to respond to the altar, I suppose. It was a grassy area. They were sitting way back, several hundred of them. They have a rope up. And when I make the altar, they take the rope down and the people come and respond. That night, I said, now, I, I want first people to come only that need to be saved. If you need to be healed, you need to be delivered, you need to be prayed for, we'll do that later. Right now, I only want people to come 
that know they're sinners and need to be saved. People began to come in out of the corner of my eye. I saw movement over here. It's very dark, but there's lights around and I began to see movement caught my eye. I looked over there and much to my surprise, there is a woman dragging herself to the altar. She has her knees pulled up toward her and she she takes her feet and she or takes her hands and moves her feet over and then she puts her hands on the ground and slides her body over and then pulls her feet over and slides her body over. I don't know, 65, 75 feet through the grass. She drags herself to the altar. The, the man who was helping me, interpreting for me, I just handed him my microphone and I went down, moved, touched by this woman. I have a handicapped daughter sitting right over here in a wheelchair. I understand the mobility limitations. I don't know everything about this woman at that point, but I understand she is limited in mobility and she is dragging herself to the altar in response to my invitation. I got down off that stage and I started crawling on the grass to meet her. I met her out there. By that time, we were both in tears. And I said, what do you need? I didn't know her name at that time. And she said, I need Jesus, I need to be saved. And so I prayed with her that night. She prayed and wept and prayed and wept and prayed. I didn't get to talk to her much after that. I just knew her name. I, got, I learned her name and just talked to her about wanting to be saved. But other obligations pulled me away. It was a large meeting and I didn't get to speak to her much more that night. The next night, the same thing happened. When I made the altar and I said, only come if you want to be saved, Dorcas drug herself to the altar for the second night, 65, 75 feet across the dirt and the grass. And I met her again. I said, Dorcas, Jesus will save you. You want to be saved? Just repent of your sins. Tell him you want to be saved. You're turning from your sins. You cannot do it yourself, but by his grace, he will save you. And that night, Dorcas came up changed. Her face was lit up with salvation. Such joy in her spirit. I will never, ever forget that night in 2009, in Abayakuta, Ogun State, Nigeria, when Dorcas got saved. She got saved. I visited with her. We visited with her quite a bit that night. I introduced her to Odie. Odie has never been back to Nigeria with us since that year. She had planned to go with us in 2020, and of course, the world was shut down and we couldn't go in 2020, so she didn't get to go. We're going to get her back if we can. By God's grace, it's getting more difficult for her to travel. But she became friends with Dorcas. We became friends with Dorcas. She now lives in a, in a room. They have a set of rooms behind the church to help people that need a place to stay. She lives in one of those rooms. The last I knew she has for several years. We have bought her a couple of wheelchairs. We have, we have given her a little money along the way, not because she asked, but because we want to do it. They don't have any way of support. There's no social security for them. There's no, there's no net for them to even fall through there. And so we try to help her a little bit along the way. She has made African clothes for us or had them made for us. We always spend time with her when we go. We always ask about her. When I talk to somebody from Abayakuta, Dorcas is our dear friend. We always wait with anticipation to hear from her and to see her when we're there. I'll try to put up some pictures up here somewhere. 
maybe even insert a video of her talking if I can if I can figure out how to do it. But what a salvation story. We found out later her family was a church family. She was a backslider. She became paralyzed through some event from the waist down mostly. Mostly paralyzed. Very similar to Odie, but different cause. She can maybe walk a little bit when she needs to, but it's very difficult and can't do it. Spends her life in a wheelchair, which is very difficult in a third world nation. Very, very difficult. Most handicapped people, if they live long, spend their lives begging on the streets for enough to eat. We've tried to, We've tried to let that not be Dorcas's plight. It never will be if we have anything to do with it. Our hearts are moved toward her. And the fact that she drug herself to the altar. A backslider hearing the gospel and dragging herself to the altar to get to Jesus. Whatever I have to do, Lord, I will get to Jesus. It reminds me of the woman with the issue of blood that seemingly got right down on the dirt and crawled because she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she was. It reminds me of the, of the Syrophoenician woman who came to Jesus with great need. Her daughter was grievously vexed with the devil and she just begged and pleaded and begged and pleaded until she got Christ's attention. And when he, when he turned to her, he said, I haven't seen faith like this. This is great faith. It's like, it's like Zacchaeus, who was a sinful man, a crook, but he wanted Jesus so bad he climbed a tree to get to Jesus. It's Peter wanting Christ so much he steps out of a boat on top of water, raging seas, stands on, he's willing to walk on water, try it to get to Jesus. I promise you he'd never done it before, but he's trying it. Oh, crawling, dragging, climbing to get to Jesus. It makes my efforts to find Christ seem very, very feeble. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to get to Jesus? I love that song. Do whatever it takes to get to Jesus. I can't sing it. Kelly sings it. Man, I love it. Dorcas, we love her. We love you, Dorcas, if you ever see this. You are very, very precious to us. Thank God for his work in your life and for Dorcas to be willing to do whatever it took. Now, did she have to crawl to the altar? Did she have to drag herself through the dirt and the grass to get there? I don't know. I don't know what was going on in her heart. I don't know what was going on in her life. I haven't ever taken time to ask what she was feeling at that moment. It might be a good question for her. But she did it. She felt like she needed to do it, evidently. And it forever changed me. What a great story of salvation. That's my word for Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. Say goodbye to the vest. Ciao for now. That is our word for Wednesday. We are so glad that you've spent a few minutes with us today. If you've been touched by today's episode, please share it with your friends and family. We welcome your questions or comments below or by email. You can find the email address in the description, along with a link to Mile Markers, the website for Boggs Family Ministries. Also, Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you again, and we hope to see you next Wednesday.